welcome to today's video wanted to do another tag video i saw this going around it's a current one the last one i posted no one's done in a really long time but i really wanted to do that one this one is current and i thought it would be a good way for you guys to get to know me a little bit especially since my channel is pretty new so this is the 20 questions book tag and it's 20 questions so let's just get into it question one how many books is too many books in a series is that a thing too many books in a series i guess if it's a series that isn't particularly good or i don't like then any amount is too much but like i have a series right here that's 11 books long and i absolutely love it there's a ebook series that i've just started reading I've only read the first couple of books in it but there's like there's like 20 books in the series if it's a good series I don't think too many books is a thing it can be a little bit daunting starting a series that has say 20 or 15 or even 10 that can be a bit daunting but if I love it I want more books I want more so I'm not I'm not put off by it personally Question two, how do you feel about cliffhangers? I wanna say that I don't mind them, but in some instances I do. And I've talked about an instance before where I was like, the cliffhanger was huge and I didn't love it. But generally speaking, if a book ends on a cliffhanger, there's usually a book two to follow. And in that case, I don't mind. I don't mind waiting a little while to read the continuation of the story but if it's a standalone book it does annoy me and i'm not gonna lie it can be the source of some anger at the closure of the book question three hardcover or paperback you know i don't really care i have both i buy both i love both um i think hardcovers hardcovers I really love for like the that nice little that's so satisfying that snap you're reading it and you're like mmm that's that's good right there I love that um, so for hardcovers and they look really nice on the shelf and I think they stand up better probably than paperbacks so I do love a good hardcover for that but I also love me a good a good floppy like look at that like that's nice like and to read a paperback I mean you can bend it it's so comfortable and light to read it's just like that is nice that is just it's comfortable right so I don't know they both serve their purpose I love both I think the only kind of book that I don't really love is like these mass market paperbacks they're just so they're so tiny in my hands and the writing is usually pretty small which I mean I can read it it's fine but it's just not my favorite I don't I don't love these so yeah I tend I tend not to buy these unless it's by accident online or if it's in like where I don't really have a choice they only come in this this format so books are books I'll take them any way I can get them Question four, my favorite book. I, I hate favorite questions because my all-time favorite is always changing and I can't just pick one. Like, is there anyone that can just pick one favorite? It's not gonna happen. Um, I'll leave a link to my Goodreads. Uh, I have a shelf that is like my, my all-time favorites, but I will say that the books in that folder shelf thing I haven't read a lot of those in a really long time so I still stand by them totally but I haven't read them in a really long time um, I will say a recent favorite was Frederick Bachman's um, anxious people I absolutely loved that book um, I love the fever series by Karen Marie Moaning she's top of the top for me I love that series so much. 
Um, what else? What else? What else? The Bird and the Sword by Amy Harmon. I love this series as well, but I love her other series more. I'll put a picture here. It's a duology, not a series, but The Bird and the Sword and The Queen and the Cure. Top of the top. I love that so much. Um, what else? Interview with the Vampire and Rice. There you go. There's some favorites for you. Question five. Least favorite book? I don't really know. Like you can look on my Goodreads and like look at my DNF shelf maybe and see what I rated low. The ones that I haven't rated on the shelf disregard because I, I haven't read them enough to say that I they are a least favorite. So don't pay attention to those. And I plan on rereading them at some point, retrying to read them at some point. But you can look at like the ones that I've rated really low. I think there's like a Twilight book on there. Scythe from Neil Shusterman. I didn't enjoy that. Um, it's generally YA books. They're not a favorite of mine. I just can't get into them. I try, but they're just, they're not favorites. Other than that, I just don't, I don't remember. If I don't like it, it's just, it's out of my mind. I mark it on Goodreads and then it's out of my brain. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like if I really hated a book, I just delete it. Oh, you know what? There is one. Oh my gosh, I hated this book so much. I didn't even finish it. I think I DNF'd it super fast. It was called Malice. I can't remember who it was by. I'll put a picture here if I find it. It was a, it's an erotica, but it was like, it was like hostile meets rape meets romance. I was like, no, that's not my vibe. It's all, it's fine. If you love it, that's great. I'm going to fix this because it's bothering me. Okay. If you love it, that's fine. Not, not saying anything bad to you. Just not my vibe. It's not my cup of tea. I love a good horror novel. I love a good romance. I do not love a good rape scene. So put all them things together not a vibe for me couldn't get into it and i ended up deleting it off of all of my devices i don't even care i wasted the couple dollars i don't ever want to read it again question six love triangles yes or no sure i don't i don't mind them as long as it's written well i that's fine with me question seven the most recent book you just couldn't finish what was a recent dnf oh See, this one, I'm going to try it again at some point, but I don't know if this one's ever going to work for me. I was so excited to read it too. It was Blindness by Jose Saramago. This one won like a Nobel Prize and is supposed to be absolutely amazing. I could not stand the way that it was written. There was like no punctuation or the punctuation was all in commas. And I guess it's supposed to like mean something. I don't know. I just, I couldn't get into it. I read to like 10%. I think I was at like 10% because I got the ebook. So I don't know what page number, but I read till about 10%. And I was like, you know what? Can't do it. Can't do it. The synopsis sounded amazing. And if it was written differently, I would have been super into it but not a vibe, can't get into it. I'll revisit it at some point because I just will. I'll try it again, but that was a recent DNF for me. Question eight, a book you are currently reading. I am currently reading this one. Um, I, I put it here because I just did a video and I just stuck the stack there, but I am currently reading this one and where's my other book that I'm reading? Mm, where is it? Oh, it's all the way over there. Hold on, let me get it. I am currently reading this one. It is Wallbanger by Alice Clayton. I am almost done with it. I've been reading this for like a week and I feel like it's taking forever. It's super funny though, but yeah, reading this one. Last book you read to someone. There's another one. Um, I just read this scary stories book 
and I have some other ones up at the top of my shelf, but um, I read some of these to my nieces because I just got these and they remind me of childhood. So yeah. Question 10, oldest book you've read? I love me a good classic. I think, I think most of them, I'm looking behind me at my shelf. Um, I think most of them, like Turn of the Screw I read recently and that was late 1800s, that was pretty old. Um, I've read some old like philosophy type stuff like Seneca. I have no idea when those were written. Um, I've read some Marquis de Sade. There's this big book up here of a collection of stories and those were written in the 18th century, so like the mid 1700s, I want to say, mid 1700s. So maybe those somewhere in there, I'm not sure. Question 11, the newest book I've read, maybe The Push, I recently read that one. Number 12, favorite author. I cannot pick just one, I cannot just pick one. Um, but Amy Harmon, I'm obsessed with, as I've said. Um, Anne Rice, I am obsessed with. I've loved her forever. Uh, Frederick Bachman is fast becoming a favorite. I've only read a couple books from him, but I consider him a favorite. Uh, Grady Hendrix is getting up there in my favorites. Um, who else, who else, who else, who else? Oh, Karen Marie Moaning. I've read a dozen books from her and she's definitely a favorite. There you go, there's some favorites for you. Question 13, buying books or borrowing books? I do a bit of both. If you look through my previous videos, I've done a couple hauls already. So I enjoy buying books. I do thrift a lot and yeah, I like buying books and I love using my library as well because it's just, it's one of my favorite places to go. I think I have a pretty good balance of both. Question 14, a book you dislike that everyone else seems to love. I don't, I don't love the Twilight series and I know that one's like split. Some people love it, some people don't like it. Um, I think everything is split into some people who like it and some people who don't. Um, I guess that. Number 15, bookmarks or dog ears? bookmarks. Bookmarks always. Um, I don't care if people dog ear. I'm not like one of those. I know there's like people out there who get like so mad about dog ears, but I really don't mind. Um, I will say I do kind of mind if I'm like buying a used book and there's a bunch of like lines in all the pages, <laughs> but then it's kind of a bummer because I don't generally do it myself, but I don't mind. Do you, do you, but bookmarks for me. I don't dog ear. Number 16, a book you can always reread. I actually don't reread very much. I'm starting to get into it. Like my whole favorites shelf on Goodreads, all of the like older books that I read, I wanna reread the whole thing. But I have so much like new stuff and stuff that I haven't read, it's hard for me to want to reread. Um, but I have reread the whole Fever series from Karen Marie Moaning. That's, I think, the only rereads that I've successfully done in my lifetime so far, thus far. Um, I reread the whole first six or seven and then finished the series with the exception of book 11, which I still haven't read. Um, but I could totally see myself rereading those again and again and again because I love them so much. I love them so much. Number 17, can you read while hearing music? I can actually, you know, and I, I didn't know if it would be something that I would be able to do because I live with other people and when everybody's like talking and stuff, even if I'm in my bedroom or, you know, out, out of the same room as them but I can still hear them, it starts to bother me because I start, my ear starts going to their conversation. So what I generally do when I read 
is I'll either put headphones in or just play it in my room. I'll play like an ambient sound, so like rain or like a mellow jazz with no lyrics, just uh, sounds, just something to kind of go with what I'm reading. And um, that kind of helps drown out the outside noise. But recently I did, I don't know why I chose to do this, but I was sitting there reading and there was noise going on. So I plugged in my headphones, but instead I put on like my Spotify favorites playlist or like I just shuffled it. And I read for like a good, I don't know, like an hour or something with just my playlist shuffling. And it didn't bother me at all. I was able to focus on what I was reading, but I know every once in a while, like a good part would come on and I would, I would put my book down and like groove out and then I would just open it back up and keep going and it wasn't a deal so yeah I guess I can I can totally read and listen to music it's fine but I cannot read and listen to tv or a movie or have people talking around me and stuff like that it just distracts me and I have to keep rereading sentences over and over and over again it's so annoying I don't like it Question 18, one POV or multiple? It doesn't matter to me as long as it's written well, it's fine. Question 19, do you read a book in one sitting or over multiple days? Always over multiple days. I can very rarely sit and read a whole book in one sitting unless it's like a novella or a very short book like this. Um, that's fine for a day read, but like a full book, it's just not going to happen. I don't have that much time. I read about 50 pages an hour, which I think is pretty average. Um, so for like a 400 page book, I'm just not going to spend eight hours in a day reading. Um, I mean, I, I know a lot of people do and I would love to, but my concentration is just not that great. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's from getting older or because of like my, my brain, but I just, I can't. I, I usually cannot read that much in one day to finish a whole book. I did recently read a whole book in less than 24 hours, but it was over the span of two days. Like I started it at night, went to sleep, woke up, read the rest of it. So I don't know if that counts. And we're at the end of it. Oh my gosh, that was fast. Um, number 20, who do you tag? As always, I... I'm not gonna tag anybody. If you would like to do this, I would love to watch. I find these videos pretty interesting. So um, if you do watch mine and you decide to do this video, um, comment down below and let me know that you did it and I'll go over to your channel and check it out. Um, I will leave the original creator of this tag in the, in the down bar. I don't remember offhand who did it, but I will find it and I will put it down there to the best of my ability. I hope you found this enjoyable. Thanks so much for watching. My voice is sore now, so you better have liked it. Have a great day, guys. <laughs> Bye.